What is happening ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another review here on Tide Drives. This is the 2023 Volvo S60 with the B5 motor in the plus trim and the dark theme exterior styling. Let's take a look at this car in depth. We're going to start that off with the exterior. We'll then pop the hood and see what kind of powertrains we are working with since there are two for the S60. We'll then pop the trunk get into the rear seats and finally the front seats. We're going to want to make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to strap this GoPro to my head and we're going to take this thing for a drive. Now, first things first, we have full LED headlamps just as you expect for your high and low beams as well as your turn signals and daytime running lights, all LED powered. Going along with that LED theme, we also have some pretty cool looking LED fog lamps. You can also see the black trim that uh, goes along with that dark theme that I was talking about just a minute earlier. Everything is really all blacked out in this car, uh, including the grille, the lower elements, and the fog light surrounds. You can see within the grille, we have a camera, which means we have the 360 degrees view uh, camera system, which comes on that plus trim level. And we also have parking sensors that span the front bumper. We have a nice long hood that kind of flows into the front bumper and nice upgraded 19 inch wheels. Really, really nice looking wheels on this particular S60. You know, they will originally come with 18s, but this particular one has the standalone option of the 19 inch wheels. As you can see, the tires measure 235.40. The mirror housings and the window surrounds are all also blacked out thanks to the dark theme. And we can see we have a pretty oversized sunroof and our shark fin antenna up top. We have turn signal indicators on the mirror as well as blind spot warning. And smart key entry on all four door handles. You just tap this little pad here to lock and your hands behind the handle to unlock. Taking a step back, the S60 is a very sharp looking car, especially with this update uh, that came out just about a year ago. We have some pretty cool lines down on the bottom of the doors and some starting on the rear door flowing into the quarter panel. Very stylish looking car, especially with those wheels. I love those wheels. Taking a look back here again, just as we had up front, out back, we have full LED tail lamps. So the Tail lamps, brake lights, turn signals, everything is all LED powered. We also have parking sensors that span the rear bumper. Some more of the black trim. We have hidden exhaust tips up underneath. We have the S60 logo, the Volvo logo, and just underneath the L in Volvo, we have the trunk release and the rear view camera. There are also two more cameras underneath the side view mirrors. And we also have the B5 all-wheel drive designation on the trunk lift. So what do you guys think of the styling on this S60? I personally think it looks great with the dark theme um, uh, trim around the vehicle and the white paint color on, this, uh, on the body of this car. All right, so for 2023, we have two separate engine options. We have the B5 engine option which entails a two-liter turbocharged inline four. It's good for 247 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, and you can get either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. And it'll come with an eight-speed automatic. Actually, regardless of um, motor choice, you will get an eight-speed automatic as your transmission. The other engine option is a T8, which entails a two-liter turbocharged and supercharged inline four with an electric motor. That produces some pretty crazy power figures, 455 horsepower, and get this, 523 pound-feet of torque. So that is quite the powerhouse, and again, that motor is a plug-in hybrid. This one, the B5, is a mild hybrid. And that T8 will come with all-wheel drive only. Let's take a look at what the trunk looks like in the S60 pops open nicely with the button on the key fob and once you get back here it is pretty roomy you know not the hugest trunk in the world since we are working with a mid-size sedan but 
For the most part, it is pretty roomy. We have some storage extensions to either side. It is all illuminated under here, and there's actually a light right over here, as you can see, that uh, lights up most of the trunk. Uh, but pretty bare bones back here, but you can lift up the trunk floor and see that we have a spare tire and tools. Once you've gotten what you need out of the trunk, we have a handle right down here. So you can close the trunk very easily. All right, so now that we're in the rear quarters of the vehicle, I can tell you that the materials are very nice back here. We have soft touch all the way up here and all the way down here where there is a storage pocket and a speaker. Even softer, so our leatherette material right where your arm's gonna rest. You know, pretty cool door handle. Lock and unlock button and your window switch back here. You can see we have some air vents even on the B pillars for the rear passengers, very nice. And take a look at those seats, very nice black leather interior. We have fold down um, arm or uh, headrests, I should say. And we also have some buttons over here on the driver's side to electronically fold your seat and they will fold down like so. And upon pressing either of those buttons, the headrest will fold down automatically. We also have a center console here with a nice padded armrest and you just push the button and cup holders will appear and a pass-through. Hop in quickly to see how much room we have back here. And I'm pleasantly surprised there is actually probably two, three inches of legroom. Um, I'm about five foot ten and I did position this front seat to a normal uh, comfortable position for myself. So yeah, pretty good legroom. You know, both of the seats back here have uh, pockets on the back. And we have a little storage tray right here to put loose change, anything like that. And two USB-C chargers. Now the only thing it might be a little bit tight for is a third passenger. We do have a pretty good sized uh, drivetrain hump. So a third passenger back, back here might be a little bit cramped. Uh, but it is definitely doable for uh, shorter journeys. We have some nice lighting up here and grab handles back here too and a little bit of an oversized sunroof i probably could call this a panoramic sunroof it doesn't reach completely black back here but uh it is definitely a pretty large sunroof and a very stylish outlook at the dashboard up front okay and here we are in the front cabin and i can say obviously the materials are just as nice up front as they are out back we do have a couple of nice features such as two person memory seats for the driver, the lock unlock button. We also have the power folding mirrors if we just simultaneously press the left and right button, those mirrors will power fold. Of course they are heated and we also have powered child locks for the rear, uh, pretty nice um, feature there. Then all of course of our window controls, a bit more storage up on the front doors rather than the rear and a couple of speakers uh, too. We have an air vent nicely surrounded by some wood and bright work. We have a trunk release button right below that. And underneath the steering column, we can see the lever to release the tilt telescoping steering wheel. We have the hood release right next to your dead pedal and of course our gas and brake pedals. Nice little sill tray with the Volvo written out and very, very comfy seat. Of course, in traditional Volvo fashion. Very nice smooth leather and nice stitching as well. We have two-way lumbar and the rest of the seat is fully powered. Here goes the key fob for the S60 and pretty much all the other Volvos. We have a nice Volvo emblem on the face of the key and then our buttons are on the side. We have the lock, unlock, trunk release and panic alarm over here. And on the bottom of the key you have this little slider which will actually um, take the top part of the key apart and we will have the physical key on the inside in case you need to use that But to start just make sure your foot's on the brake and you just twist the little knob right here Now this car being in a mild hybrid for 2023 has the starter generator So usually when you start the car, you really won't hear a cranking of a starter You just kind of hear the engine war to life We'll get started right here on the steering wheel. It is fully leather wrapped with some stitching on the inside. We have all of our adaptive cruise control settings right over here and media settings over here. We have the up down for the volume and back and forth for changing your different songs. 
We have a little page button up here that mildly configures the screen up top and our voice commands. Behind the steering wheel, we have a couple of stocks, one for you, all of your automatic um, lighting, as well as automatic high beams, your front and rear defrosters, turn signals, and all of that good stuff. And to the opposite side, we of course have the stock for your wipers. Now, the screen up here is very nice and simple. Those two are the key words up here. This is pretty much what you see is what you get. So you have a big, you know, speedometer over to the uh, left side and the revs on the right side. What we'll gear you're in over there and a digital speedometer on the other side. And you can also press this little button right here to get the Google Maps in the center. Um, and also press the OK button to get some trip settings. Uh, but that is pretty much it with the center screen. Very simple, but very nice looking as well. Up here, we have a pretty nice uh, dash with a center channel speaker, and that brings me down to the new Google-based infotainment system. Again, it's kind of the same name of the game as the center screen right here. It looks very nice, but is very simple. So we'll kind of go through a few of the features here. We have the Google Maps, obviously, right here. Looks very, very nice, and you can see the satellite image uh, over there. You can also search for different places up top and zoom in and out of the map right over here. A little home button right over here. Uh, we have the media screen right here, in which you can switch to different sources. We also have our phone screen. And we also have the Google uh, Assistant. So you can just pretty much say, hey Google, and the car will activate the, um, the voice commands, which is pretty nice. We have all of our apps right over here. If you press the end button, you can see different car status. I'll tell you if your tire pressures are good, your oil life, all that good stuff. We have all of the different sources for the audio, the Apple CarPlay, uh, Google Assistant, and your in-car owner's manual. Also, you have the Google Play Store to download different apps to the vehicle. We have the camera system, which will immediately bring up the 360 degree view cameras and wherever you want to see uh, you can just click that area on the car and it'll kind of bring you to that um, area you can also turn on and off your auto braking and the parking sensors to either side of the climate control tab you have your heated seat controls and we also have a devoted uh, climate tab defrosters up top AC settings up top as well uh, where you want the air to blow, your fan speed sort of in the somewhere in the middle, and your two temperatures for the dual zone climate control. You can kind of sync them right in the center there. One more thing is the settings tab. So there's quite a bit in these settings, so I'll kind of go through them quickly. You can see we can turn on and off all of our safety assistance and also um, adjust the firmness of the steering. Pretty neat. We have our sound settings for the speakers. Your connectivity, Wi-Fi settings, and all of that good stuff. Uh, different controls. You can fold down the headrests electronically, which is a pretty neat um, party trick there. And the interior brightness, uh, lighting, and all that good stuff too. And that pretty much does it. There is some system settings too that you can go through. Um, and you can also swipe in the top and kind of log in and out different users of the vehicle. So pretty neat. Uh, infotainment but that's pretty much it you know it has all the basics in in the infotainment system but it's not their sort of a uh, big overwhelming system that takes days and days to get used to it's just very simple on the bottom we have a couple of physical buttons one for your hazards uh, quick defrosters and some uh, audio settings and your uh, volume in the center down below here we have a little uh, storage tray to put maybe pencil and pens or loose change and we have a pretty large one with some more storage, a 12 volt socket and two cup holders. And that brings me over to this little center stack here. We first of all have our gear selector, which is a sort of hollowed out piece, pretty cool looking. Uh, again, eight speed torque converter automatic transmission. We pull it straight down into drive like so, and straight up for reverse in which our reverse and camera will pop up. And then we have the P for park, our twist knob that you saw before to start and stop the engine. We have a um, electronic parking brake and also a 
um, hill start assist. So we have the uh, sort of button for that right there. And if it's green, it is active. Nice center console here, which you can lift up and you can see, look at that, Volvo gives you this little uh, cleaner for the center screen. And we have two USB-C inlets in there too. Passenger area is pretty nice. You get a nice little uh, slab of wood right here and a glove box you can open up, all illuminated inside and felt lined. We have these visors up here with card holders, mirrors, and lights. Also fold to block light coming in from over there. All four passengers around will have grab handles too. And we have a pretty simplified center stack up here. One control used for the uh, panoramic sunroof for both the shade and the actual glass portion. So once that's open, you can actually tap the button to uh, vent the glass and slide again to uh, slide open the glass. And we have some various lighting controls in here, all sort of touch sensitive and some SOS controls and emergency buttons up there. Also have an auto dimming rear view mirror with your garage door home links as well. But that pretty much does it for the features on the S60. Let's get it out on the road and see how it drives. Okay, let's see what it's like to drive the 2023 Volvo S60 with the B5 powertrain. All right, so a little overview of the test drive. We have a nice little dead end right at the end of the street over here, which we're gonna pull into and we'll test out the turning circle at that point. Then we'll get it out onto a more main road. So hopefully get up to about 45, 50 miles an hour and we'll test out the uh, comfort and noises, you know, the road noise, tire noise, uh, engine noise, all that good stuff at that speed. And finally, we'll end up on a back road, which is where we'll do an acceleration test. I like to get the car to 25 miles an hour and then kind of mash the throttle, see how the transmission reacts. And of course, how fast we can get up to speed. And pretty much the rest of it is gonna be some nice, bumpy, you know, windy, curvy, nuts of elevation change roads. You know, just sort of the back roads of Connecticut. And uh, that'll give us a pretty good evaluation of the suspension, the steering, all that good stuff. So we'll get a pretty good test drive in store for you guys. Yeah, so pretty good turning circle, nothing groundbreaking or anything, uh, but definitely good uh, turning circle. So if you guys are in the cities every once in a while, you know, and you do lots of parallel parking, uh, just keep that in mind. You'll have no problem getting in out of those spots with the S60. Immediately, as you notice, um, the throttle input is pretty sharp, uh, pretty neat. Uh, just something to keep in mind if you like to drive smoothly or if you have kind of a lead foot, you know, you don't really have to uh, use that lead foot. It already has pretty good throttle response. So yeah, now that we're up at, you know, between 45 and, and 50 miles an hour, it's very quiet in here. They did a very good job with noise insulation. You know, the really only wind noise that I hear are coming from the mirrors, which is to be expected. And also tire noise is also pretty minimal. Uh, you really don't hear that rolling of the tires all that much. Of course it's there, but uh, not too bad. You know, even the cars that were passing on coming you really don't hear them all that much, which is pretty good uh, noise insulation on this car. Now, the engine noise is also kept out pretty good. Um, I did notice when we had the hood open, there really was no insulation on the underside of the hood, um, you know, on the hood itself, uh, which, you know, doesn't really seem to affect the noise on the car. You know, there has to be a lot of insulation on the firewall, so like in between the dash and the engine compartment, because there really isn't a whole lot of noise intrusion. So this car really doesn't have like a sport motor or anything. Once you get the T8 motor, of course you will. Uh, so we'll just basically get it up to 25 miles an hour, mash the throttle and see how fast we get up to speed. All right, so we're at 
got 25 now and yeah it's a pretty brisk acceleration for this b5 motor we're working with about 200 and i think 47 horsepower 247 horsepower 250 something pound feet of torque so pretty good powers you know just about on par for all the rest of its competitors but i do have to say you know just about i think a year ago maybe two years ago they offered a t6 powertrain which was the same turbocharged two liter four cylinder as this car has but with the addition of a supercharger with a non-hybrid setup which was a really really awesome engine so you got that you know sort of low end grunt of the supercharger and a turbocharger would take off uh, with the higher rpms to kind of give you a very linear acceleration and that had 316 horsepower so that was a really nice middle grounds between the t6 the turbocharged um, inline four or i'm sorry the t5 which is the turbocharged inline four and the t8 which is the turbocharged supercharged and electric motor inline four uh, but they no longer offer that mid-range engine uh, so it is basically now the mild hybrid b6 or b5 and the uh, plug-in hybrid t8 now again you can get the um, b5 in either a front wheel drive or all wheel drive obviously up here in the northeast we have the all wheel drive um, and again you know, the eight-speed automatic, as you saw, did a pretty good job of changing up gears and kind of reacting to that sharp throttle input and changed it up to the right gear and got the turbo spooling and we kind of just, you know, went away in style. And there's a, bit, a little bit of rattling back here from the license plate, so that's not anything to do with the car if you're hearing some rattling going on back there. even around the corners it does pretty well now, obviously this is a front wheel drive based all-wheel drive system so we do have a little bit of weight in the front um, but it does corner pretty good you know steering is obviously a little bit light uh, but there is a setting in here if I can find it that you can firm up the steering it actually is firm right now so it is pretty light still in the firm setting let's change it over to the lighter setting so yeah it lightens it up even more so yeah i mean i would really use the the uh, the firm feeling for on the highways uh that's, and that's really kind of like when i like a, a firm steering feel and on the back roads it's just kind of easy to just scoot around if you're not driving like in a in a spirited fashion just to have it in the uh, sort of softer steering mode uh, so to say we went over some pretty uh, bumpy roads just back there too and the suspension does a very nice job of soaking up all the bumps. That is one thing that Volvo definitely knows how to do is make a, a very comfortable sus uh, suspension system and a equally as comfortable, uh, even more comfortable seat. You know, even though we have 19 inch wheels and some pretty small uh, sidewalls on the tire, you know, the S60 does a very nice job soaking up all the bumps. Definitely a very comfort-oriented suspension on this vehicle. Now again, I just touched on it a minute ago, um, but the comfort of the seats is also spectacular. It is such a plush seat just to sit in. Um, leather has a lot of give, so you kind of just sink in the seat, and it is supremely comfortable. And uh, this is pretty much the most basic seat too you know you have the two-way lumbar but if you uh, get a I believe it's the top trim uh, you can get the thigh adjustments and the four-way lumbar and the massaging seats and that ventilated all that good stuff too added on to it uh, but this even being the base seat is very very comfortable I actually have family members of mine who will only buy Volvos because they truly are just the most comfortable seats out there
right, so taking our last turn, we'll just give it a quick little acceleration coming up the hill. Uh, one last one. Let's see, wait for this guy to get out of our way. And turbo does spool up pretty good. Alrighty, so that pretty much does it for the test drive and features review of the 2023 Volvo S60 with the B5 engine and the uh, plus trim level. I hope you've enjoyed this car just as much as I have, and I hope, also hope you stay with us here at Tie Drives for more videos just like this one.